very good evening to you and welcome to the program, The Missing Link. The Missing Link is a drive of the heart to build initiative designed to ensure that um, youths within the ages of 16 and 35 have a holistic development. And this is Flow 94.9 FM, the flow of God's on state. My name is Victoria Ichie and I will be your anchor person this evening. I'm not alone this evening. With me in the studio is Mr. Chinomso Okore. Mr. Chinomso Okore is our guest today and he is a graduate of public administration from Abia State Polytechnic. He's married, yes, and he has four kids. He's a seasoned instructor with the Civil Defense Corps and a counter-terrorist operator by training, currently seven in Abia State. So you're welcome to the show. Thank you so very much. And joining us on virtually is Auntie Onye Raf. I like I like the way she puts her name, um, Mrs. Raf. Onye Wachiko. It's like straight up, but I could just call her Auntie Onye. Auntie Onye is one of the founder of the Hats to Build initiative. Auntie Onye, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Victoria. Good evening and welcome, Chinon. So, uh, welcome, Onye. <laughs> okay, so straight to the business of today. We are looking at the topic, substance abuse and addiction in young people. Now, there is a recent story about a final year student of Michael O'Brien University of Agriculture who recently jumped from a three-story building and ended his life. And story has it that he was under the influence of a substance. So, and uh, it's very pathetic because at this point, the parents were expecting to reap the fruit of their labor. But hey, just like that, his life was cut short. So, sir, what exactly is substance abuse? Thank you so very much, Victoria. Substance abuse, from the word abuse, abuse just mean improper use of anything. When you misapply, and uh, misuse any substance repeatedly. It's an abuse. Okay. And uh, do you know when you said substance, um, it's as though there is a particular thing they were referring to. When you say substance, are you talking about water? What exactly is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think our concentration in this uh, study this evening is on uh, alcohol and drugs. Related okay. compositions. Anything within the composition of alcohol and drugs. All right. So um, I'm just going to ask, is there any difference between substance abuse and substance dependence? All right. When you talk about substance dependence, that means uh, the person has undergone what we call a medical assessment and uh, such a person has been placed on substance for survival. Okay. But when you're talking about abuse, it's when you take it indiscriminately, when it is not clinically prescribed for your consumption and you just take them because you're deriving joy oh all right so um when is someone really said to be addicted all right when you are addicted is way beyond abuse it is uh, the constant abuse of a substance that leads to addiction addiction here implies the way the body craves a substance you know or is kind of a behavior especially when it causes a compulsive or obsessive push towards results you know and when such person last concern over the consequences All it becomes right. an addiction that's serious and Tony I just want to ask um, do you know how quickly a substance abuse can progress in um, into addiction is it is this something that happens just once you just take one drug like that bam you're already having a substance abuse or you are already addicted well, you know, you just heard what uh, uh, the uh, call uh, superintendent of call said that Chinonso is an improper use of substances. The key word there is improper. So it's something you gradually start, you do it, either because somebody is doing it, you want to join, or you just derive joy. Let's take the list of uh, paracetamol. Okay. You know, paracetamol, you just take it. Once you have sign of headache, you take it. Yes. Once you have body pain, you take it. And you don't also realize that you're actually abusing that drug. It gets to a point, you are no more sensitive to that drug. That drug is no more working for you. You go for a higher dose of uh, paracetamol or go for a higher 
uh, painkiller. So when you begin to do something like you just do it without prescription, but right? without prescription, I mean, these are substances that ought to be prescribed by a medical practitioner. You just do it because you learn that it works. You know, most of us are actually guilty of that. So it's not something that uh, is one off. It's something you keep doing one day, two days, three days. You advise your friend. It works for you. It can work for them. So okay. it's something that builds over a period of time. All right. All right. So I just want to find out, um, sir, uh, if um, this drug abuse or substance abuse is, is it um, inherent errors? Is it hereditary? Is it something that can be transferred from a parent to a child? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, it's not hereditary. It is uh, an influence. Okay. An influence. We learn it. Because uh, most people who are addicted to substances are basically because of peer pressure. Okay. Because of peer pressure, some do it out of experimental curiosity. Others out of low self-esteem. Others out of frustration. Others out of laziness or idleness when you're jobless. Some too because of uh, the what I call child abuse by some uh, caretakers or guardian who overuse them. They want to keep fit. They want to be strong enough to carry on with the task. Mm. Deliver them. So they get into such uh, uh, act, uh, actions. And then parental failure. Parental failure. Some parents do not take care or look after or care about what their children do. You know, when you watch over your child, you will understand when their character, when their lifestyles are changing as to know what is causing them. So it is not hereditary. There are a lot of factors. Okay, thank you very much. And Tony, um, how is this um, substance abuse or, um, or dependence from what you described, how is it diagnosed? How, how do you know? How, how, how is it diagnosed? Well, um, folks, it appears uh, physically. It also appears from the point of behavioral. You understand? Now, you notice certain things someone is doing. Now, you know it's not really this, this person doing this. A lot of things have changed. You find some of them become so irritable. Some of them think that, okay, look at the person you mentioned that jumped from a three-story building. I mean, certain things become like uh, it, it's, it's, it can be done. You know, you also see some of them missing school, being antisocial somehow. And uh, isolating them. Okay. So, uh, not keeping to their promises. You know, uh, also, addicted. The feel is a normal thing. So, little, little things you find. But you find that most of those people actually, you see them, some of them are withdrawn. Somebody you know is very lively, suddenly becomes withdrawn or highly irritable. You know? These are the things you also look at as their behavior change. Some of them begin to eat unnecessarily uh, heavy, or they don't eat at all, or um, I'm going to a particular person. You know, it, it feels like uh, I have to go to see John, I'm going to see Kate. There's something, a lot of changes begin to uh, uh, appear in their behavior. So mm -hmm. they the outward side, you see. They don't exist as human beings. They don't diagnosed. All right. Okay, yes. You are still tuned to Flow 94.9 FM, the flow of God's own state. And this is the missing link. The missing link is a drive of the Heart to Build Youth Development Initiative. The target is that young people sit back and listen and receive value and understand some certain things based on the topics discussed. And of course, you know that you can go to the Heart to Build Initiative facebook page and drop your comments contribution and even become a volunteer yes you can do that but for today we are treating substance abuse and addiction as, as it affects the young people and with me in the studio is mr chinomso emmanuel and antonio doing justice to it we're not going to waste time we're going to open the phone lines immediately so that you can call in on time and ask your questions and receive clarity while we continue the phone lines are 0808 182 the SMS line, of course, you can also send your message to 0906 510 8289. 
how in how have you actually been coping have you really been abusing the drugs that a particular drug you took and you didn't know that excessive of it was affecting you or is there someone you know who is going through a particular process of drug abuse or substance abuse that you will want to ask some questions for clarity on how to look after the person that is that time right now for you to call hello good evening hello good evening pastor if fine no my dear how are you i'm fine good evening sir good evening is that Vic? yes it is <laughs> mm. You're welcome to the How are you enjoying the How are you enjoying the weekend? The weekend is fine. I have a guest with me here, Mr. Emmanuel. Yeah, I think I'm Emmanuel, and uh, I think I'm correct. Yes, you are. Yeah, uh, because I've been listening to the program. All right. So yeah, my name is Pastor Fine Emmanuel. I'm calling from Baos, Israel, and we're not. All right. Okay. Um, you talked about drug. I mean, a substance dependence and um, substance abuse. Yes. In the course of your explanation, you said substance dependence is when, drug, when such substance is being used under prescription, while abuse is that that is being used outside prescription. Yes. I think I'm correct. Very correct. But I want to ask this question. In the course of subjecting oneself to substance dependence, don't you think that person might go to the point of being addicted to that very substance? And then bringing it to substance abuse, don't you think when that person is addicted, the person is also abusing the substance? So how can this areas be totally controlled or curtailed you understand my question i'm with you yeah okay. that's my question uh, for now right. god bless you thank you god very much you. Pastor thank fine you. all right mr man all over to you well uh it is very clear there like we explained up an issue substance dependence is uh, clinically advised which means you're dealing with a professional who notice uh, a kind of a uh, deficiency that requires such a substance to complement or supplement. And uh, withdrawal of such uh, substance may lead to either deformity or any other kind of malady. So professionally, when the professional says discontinue, you mm. discontinue. And when the professional says you, I mean, depend on this for the rest of your life, there is no way you're not going to depend on them. And then uh, there are what I call fruitful addiction. Fruitful oh. addiction cannot mean harmful addiction. Like someone who is asthmatic, and after treating the asthma, you are given an inhaler. I want to bet you, you are depending on that inhaler till you die. Mm. And then, because you are depending on that inhaler, you are addicted to that inhaler. When the inhaler is not, uh, I mean, handy, you may harm yourself, and which may eventually lead to that. We are discussing when you are taking addiction to the extreme and which is taking it to the wrong angle. Thank you, sir. Oh, I, I've never heard the word fruitful addiction before. I'm just hearing that for the first time. I believe someone listening right now just heard that um, those combinations for the first time too or not. But it, it feels good to know that there is actually addiction that is fruitful at least in our course of conversation. But still keep those calls coming in. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Good evening. My name is Naomi. I'm calling from Omaha. Your name is? Naomi. Naomi. Naomi, you're welcome to the missing link. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so there is a question I want to ask. Go ahead. Okay. I'm telling you was like, you know, the, in the case of taking paracetamol for headache and all these things can lead to um, drug abuse. I want to know for like people like us that do have like painful menstrual cramps and we do take like ibuprofen because I do take that like every month mm -hmm. and it has kind of become like a normal thing for me. I want to know if that can also be termed as drug abuse. Do you understand? All yes. right. Antonio, Antonio will answer you now. Thank you, Naomi. Antonio, over to you. 
Can I get what she asked clearly? Okay, so she is saying that um, pe- uh, talking about substance abuse, that you, um, she normally takes ibuprofen for as uh, like mm-hmm. a pain relief during menstrual cramps. Mm-hmm. That is there mm-hmm. a possibility that that could actually result to substance abuse? I believe that's the summary of what she's trying to find out. Oh, okay, let me give you let me give you a very practical example. Um, I'm, a, I'm an ulcer patient. And at some point, I started taking uh, ibuprofen. I didn't know that it was actually affecting my internal organs, and I was bleeding. I'm giving you a, a practical example. Okay. And what has caused my ulcer? At some, at, when I was admitted some years back, I almost lost it. The cause was that I was taking um, NSA. That's what is it called, non-steroidal drug. That was ibuprofen and the rest of them. I was taking them like to uh, manage the pains that I was having due to the ulcer. But that thing was actually dealing with me and increasing the ulcerations I had. Mm. So yes, because I was taking them, I didn't know that actually it could cause. So as I speak with you, I no more take ibuprofen. So I want to advise you, Naomi, if you can actually seek uh, a guidance um, uh, uh, advice, those things are easily abused and they have very um, harmful effects subsequently without our knowing. So um, I want to say that you just have to seek medical advice. Taking it regularly as so point it's going, to, it's going to dispose you to dispose you to something you never imagined that's my advice all right thank you very much Antonio Naomi you had it so you know what to do right now 0808-182-6949 or 0811-605-2949 you could send an sms to 0906-510-8289 are you facing any challenge concerning substance abuse is there a question you have Or maybe you could actually share with us an experience that will help someone come out of their addiction. Uh, Victoria, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. You know, uh, oftentimes, these young persons, just like uh, Chinon so said, uh, are led to uh, abusing drugs or substances uh, out of peer pressure. I just want to say, I don't know who is listening to us now. If you want to talk to someone, so the missing link is there for you. The Heart Beat Initiative is there for you. You can actually send us a private message on our Facebook page and we'll get right uh, across to you and help you to deal with it. Mm. Some of them actually need uh, some measure of psychotherapy, you know, just to help them. You don't like push them out. No, you can't, you know, you can't change. They can actually change. Some of them don't be conscious of what they're doing and they just need to be guided rightly. So just to assure you okay. that the Heart Good Initiative is there for you. All right. All right. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Um, Mesoma, you're welcome to the show, The Missing Link. Mesoma, go ahead. I want to, yeah, I want to know, when you know that someone is addicted to a particular drug, how do you have depression? Like this particular person now that said took a drug and then jumped off from building. Okay. And you think that someone is high on drugs or something, how, you get, how can you actually help this very person? Is there any... Um, any organization or something that can actually call to help this person, or can you just take it to the hospital? How actually can we be able to help people who are addicted to drugs? Okay, thank you very much, Mesoma, for calling in. Okay, so Mr. Emmanuel, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, the foundation under which we are discussing today handles such matters, but then uh, you can help such a person, it's very, very important. First and foremost, that person needs to help himself or herself by first admitting that there is a problem. It's very difficult to do that, but they have to admit that there is a problem. Then you have to reflect on your addiction. What am I really addicted to? How am I addicted to this? Then you have to appreciate the benefits of sobriety. You have to be sober at some times to think. Then identify your triggers. What triggers you? What moves you? What motivates your your addiction? You, something triggers you. Some it is when they are in the midst of people who drink, and because they are there, they must drink. But when they are not in the midst of their group, they don't drink. So you can actually change your environment. You can exercise. You can accept the past the way it is. Don't judge yourself by mm-hmm. your past because definitely you must change. And I have to tell you this. In recovery stages, there are what we call pre-contemplation stage, where the addicts do not even believe that there is a solution. But by persuasion, they have to come to terms with it. 
there is a contemplation stage where if the addicts they know that they are aware of the consequences but they are procrastinating they say okay maybe in the near future because they are afraid of relapsing or going back then we have the preparation stage where the addicts begin to take initiatives by themselves they begin to refrain from certain activities mm. by themselves they begin to apply what are called self-made therapies and then we have the action stage where the addicts now take what are called prolonged abstinence mm. and are ready to see professionals then the maintenance stage which is the final stage is when the addicts now adopt a new lifestyle which they have cultivated for themselves and which leads them to full recovery Oh, I believe that you are going to have to drop this at the Hearts to Build initiative page so that someone can go back there and go through all this and know exactly how to receive help. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I remain a Stephanie Emmanuel. I called back. Okay, sir. Good evening. Yeah, from my own invitation, the foundation, from my every explanation we made this uh, evening, uh, I understood that they take care of those who are into addiction. But then I want to ask, because if not for this radio program, most most of us wouldn't have known what the foundation is all about. Okay. I wouldn't know if you can digress a bit, those resource persons there, to let us understand how this foundation can be reached, not only on Facebook, or WhatsApp, how, what strategy do you people outline, you know, to see that the populace is completely sensitized, so that for those many, many are into addiction, you know, they could come and, uh, you know, recommended to you people or brought to you people as the case may be. All right. That's my question. God bless you. Thank you very much, Pastor Ifani. Antony, I think you are in the best place to explain this better. Can you repeat what he asked? I didn't hear him clearly. He is asking exactly that if not for the fact that we have the missing link, that they wouldn't know that there is an initiative that caters for people who have this kind of situations. So it would be nice to enlighten people more with few minutes exactly how how and what the Heart to Build initiative covers when it comes to issues like this. All right. Um, um, I want to, I hope the person is still listening. Yes. I would like to ask him, to kindly go to our Facebook page at Heart to Build Initiative, uh, send a message to us. I will reach out to you or any of us, either I or Farah will reach out to you to do a follow up. By the way, the missing link is just the radio program powered by the Heart to Build Initiative. Remember, we were just uh, we flagged off officially uh, barely four weeks ago. Yes. And one of the things we are doing is also we're going to run seminars. We're going to reach out to communities, to schools, run workshop programs. So the missing link is just a radio program that is attached to the Heart to Build uh, initiative. So I want to assure uh, the person that called us that we're not just limiting ourselves to the radio program. We're going to go to uh, meet people in the community, in various schools, and create this alignment program. Because we know that a lot of our young persons are actually affected. And trust me, we are going to have personnel who are going to work with us. I trust Nonson. Nonson is going to work with us. Because it's one thing that is actually plaguing young people nowadays. So please, I would like to help me to ask him to go to our page, drop a message or drop his number. I'm, personally, I'm going to reach out to him as an assurance. All right. Thank you very much, Antony. All right. So we have a question here from our SMS line. Good day, everyone in the studio. I am Divine from Umwa here. You see, there are various forms of abusing substances, even being dependent on substance for sustenance could lead to substance addiction. I want to ask a question, please. When one is addicted to a substance, how can you identify it, even though you don't feel it physically or feel any side effects? Because today, millions of people are addicted to cigarettes, even though they read the effects on the pack about lung cancer and what it does. So please, I want to know. This is from Divine. Thank you, Divine, for sending in your message. Yeah, thank you, Divine. Uh, when the person develops the inability to stay away from that substance, that's an addiction. Mm. When such a person displays lack of self-control over the addiction, over the addicted substance, that's addiction. Having uncontrollable desire for any substance whatsoever, that's an addiction. 
then dismissing the consequences because if you're addicted to something if people want to talk you away from that substance you will always have reasons to argue mm. so whenever you dismiss the consequences of any substance you are addicted and then lack of emotional response when you don't have remorse whatsoever over what you are doing when you feel that what you're doing is right whether people like it or not that is an addiction so when you begin to feel this way i'm sure you are addicted please call for help call for help is very very important okay now you've had it but i'm just going to ask um sir just maybe like two treatments two treatments for substance abuse or dependence treatments yeah, when we're talking about treatment treatments are basically for professionals but i want to tell you that exercise does a lot to the mental man Mm. exercise when you exercise and sweat the mental man is changed and renewed and rejuvenated and it can take you away from so many activities for some time and which can be a curative measure exercise one is very very important then abstinence mm. abstinence very difficult but if you can try it but i want to assure you that the result will shock you Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel. That's how far we can take the cause. Oh, I wish we had longer time, but we do not. Maybe somehow we'll have an extension <laughs> something. Yes, yes just <laughs> or to add, add that, uh, uh, Victoria, sometime uh, in the future, in the future, we're going to come back maybe with another part of uh, mental health issues and uh, we'll have enough time. Now is never an, enough time for us to talk about this, but just to assure our listeners that we're going to come back some other time to discuss this further. Yes. Thank you so much, Auntie Onye Raf. Wachiku, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel. Thank you so, so much. Um, you've been listening to Flow 94.9 FM, the flow of Gatson State. And yes, it is the Mr. Link, a drive of the Hats to Build initiative. You can go to their Facebook page on the Hats to Build initiative, like, comment, and drop any questions that you have. And I'm sure they will attend to every single need that you apply for there. Well... It's been your queen, Victoria Ichie. Have a blessed evening.